Welcome to the Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar. During today's webinar, you're able to ask questions of our panelists. The Q&A and webinar recording will be published a week from today's presentation. Today we are covering troubleshooting email engine performance and connectivity issues. Doug Reif and Mike Farenbrook will take us through this content. Over to you, Doug. Thank you, Greg, and welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Doug Reif. I'm a Principal Technical Support Analyst at BMC, and together with my colleague Mike Farnbrook, we'll be presenting on troubleshooting the email engine. The agenda for today is to give you a brief overview of the email engine functionality, and then we'll look at email engine performance and performance best practice recommendations. Next, we want to introduce you to our new email engine test button, which is available on the communities now. This tool will help you significantly reduce your time to identify and resolve configuration issues with your mailboxes. Support has been working hard to create troubleshooting guides that will help you self-solve and create support cases that will be resolved faster. So Mike's going to walk you through some of our new email engine troubleshooting guides. And finally, we've provided a page of references so that you can go and do some research on your own after the webinar. Today's webinar is actually part three in a series of email engine webinars. The first webinar was for troubleshooting basic email engine issues, and the second covered configuration of the email engine in a server group environment. In today's webinar, we'll cover additional troubleshooting information related to configuration issues and performance best practices. Let's do a quick recap of the email engine environment. This might help provide context to much of the information we're going to present today. This is a diagram showing the physical layout of a typical email engine environment. You can have multiple active email engines that reside on the same box as the AIR server. The email engines can connect directly to the local AIR system, or they can use a load balancer to connect to a pool of AIR servers. This can help distribute your email engine load in the same way that you distribute user traffic. Now this is a logical view of the same environment. Each email engine is capable of handling multiple mailboxes. In this example, you can see I have three mailboxes that are handled by two email engines. I've distributed them so that email engine one is primary for one incoming and one outgoing mailbox, while email engine two is handling my second outgoing mailbox. So you can see by the ranking that if either one of these email engines goes down, the other will handle all three mailboxes. So with this layout, I get distribution of my workload as well as high availability. Today we're going to focus on two primary areas. The first is configuring the email engine itself using the best practices. And the second is to use the new email test button to configure the connectivity to your post office. Before we start talking about performance and performance best practices, let me show you a utility that you can use to help actually measure your throughput. This will be useful to run before and after you do your performance tuning, and it can be periodically used to monitor your throughput over time. To use it, you'll have to let the email engine run with the finest level logging during a long enough time frame to capture a good sample of data, but you can let it run for several days if you like. So let me show you quickly how to use this utility. I'm going to copy this URL from the communities page and open it up on my test system. Now I'm on my test system, I'm going to go to the URL for the communities page and it'll pull up the knowledge article that explains how to install, how to use this utility and examples on how you might take the data that is generated by the utility to create some charts that might be useful to you. Key thing is that you find the latest version of the utility attached to the document, download that file, and then simply unzip it into a folder. I'm just going to put it into a folder called email throughput right off of my C drive. And now that's all you need to do to install it. So to use it, what you do is you find your email.log file. Now from here, all I need to do is drag the log file onto the batch file. And this will automatically start processing the log file through the utility. And you'll see I have a file already starting to be generated called throughput analysis. And we'll just wait a few minutes for this to be completely analyzed. You can also run this utility from the command line, which is what you need to do if you're using Unix. 
let me open up the readme file here and it shows the exact syntax it's just java-jar and then the email throughput.jar file name and you add an input parameter of dash i using your log file name so that's all you need to do if you're going to run this from unix i had let my logs run in finest mode for about two full days and you can see it's about three and a half gigabytes and it's uh, roughly 25 million log lines so it did take a little bit of time for it to uh, be processed I'd say it took probably between 30 and 40 minutes and uh, once it's done we'll open up the file in a text editor and you can see what it provided and uh, the contents of this file are documented in the readme so this the first section is a CSV formatted file so you can open this up in Excel and create charts off of it but you can see in here I have multiple mailboxes that are all being recorded and different counters are being calculated for each email that got sent so we we calculate things like the total time to prepare the email the total time to grab information through a sql statement that's the query time uh, the total time to actually send it to the post office and so all these counters we collect and at the end of the csv section we do some totals for you and this is probably what's going to be useful when you are monitoring your system so we show you when this, the log started and stopped. And in that time, 412,000 emails were sent. Total duration of that was about uh, almost 24 hours. And the average emails per hour in that time frame was about 17,386 emails per hour. So that's my throughput. And that's one of the numbers that I want to look at. Uh, one thing I want to show you is directly above this section is the email sent per hour each hour so if I have busy times during the day maybe my system or uh, network or something is slower during certain parts of the day I can look and I can see well the average of 17,000 per hour it, it does look about right although at some points I had slightly lower and some points I had slightly higher I see 20,000 per hour here and I see 13,000 per hour here uh, I would guess maybe the low 12,000 here might have been because during that hour, it wasn't a full hour because that's when I started the logs. So anyway, that information is all useful to help you understand your throughput of your email engine. There's other counters here that you might look at, and one is the per mailbox. So in the time that I had the logging enabled, mailbox SMTP1 sent out 167,000 mails. And my other mailboxes sent less, but they sent about equal. So you could probably guess that SMTP1 was my default outgoing mailbox, and the other ones were probably special purpose mailboxes. So all this information here should help you to judge your throughput of your email engine. And then you can monitor this, enable the logs maybe once every two weeks or once a month, and then come back and look and see how you're doing to uh, gauge whether or not you have worse throughput or not. Or maybe after you uh, watch this webinar, you'll have some best practice tuning parameters you want to go try out. Well, run this utility first, and then set the tuning parameters that we're going to provide, and then run this again and see what kind of benefit you were able to achieve by setting those parameters. Now let's look at some best practice tuning recommendations that BMC is providing. By the way, this information is documented in Knowledge Article 371107, so you can go back and check that out later. And the three areas that we focused on were just tuning the email engine process in general, and then tuning for outgoing emails, and tuning for incoming. Now let me talk a little bit about the testing that we did. The first thing we focused on was the performance for outgoing messages. So what we did was we created a huge queue of messages in the messages form by putting about 10 million records in there. And we're using Exchange Server 2016. And we monitored the system until about 500,000 emails had been sent. And then we looked at the rate of that using the default settings. So with just the default settings, we saw that about 326 messages in a minute were sent. And that took a little over 23 hours to process those 500,000 emails. And then we tried a bunch of different tuning parameters until we found the ones that gave us the best throughput. And what we found is with the tuning parameters that we're recommending, that those 500,000 emails were processed at a rate of about 758 a minute. And that took under 11 hours to finish. So it was quite a substantial amount of savings and time to send those messages. The next area we looked at was incoming messages. 
And so in this case, what we did is we queued up about 5,000 emails that were incoming, and we just monitored to see how fast they would come in. And they, those 5,000 emails took about five hours of process at 16.08 messages per minute, just using the default settings. And then we did a bunch of testing. We tried different tuning parameters until we achieved what we thought were the very best. And once we found those best practice settings, we saw that those 5,000 emails were processed at a rate of 73.46 a minute. And it took just over an hour to process those same number of messages. So again, quite a substantial amount of performance improvement by making these best practice recommendations. So now let's look at exactly what those recommendations are. We'll start with tuning the email engine process in general. So the recommendation is that you set the Java min and max heat to 256 megabyte and 1024 megabyte. This is actually the default, so you don't really need to go back and set this, but depending on your environment, depending on things like large attachments and other things you're doing, it's possible that you need to change this. So I just wanted to document here what the general best practice was so you had a starting point. Another thing we want to look at is the garbage collection settings. Now these garbage collection settings are typical of what you might see in other uh, remedy components. So we want to make sure that you disable the explicit GC, set the new ratio to 2, use compressed OOPS, and use Conkmark Sweep GC. So we want to make sure that those are all set so you get for the email engine, what we consider to be the best settings for the garbage collection. And lastly, we want to make sure that you set the mailbox polling units to seconds. And you do that by setting mailbox polling units is minutes to false. When we set the um, polling interval, which you'll see later, we want it to be in seconds. So we'll go ahead and set that here. Let me pop back into my test environment and I'll show you how to set these. We're going to run regedit. And from regedit, we'll go to HQ local machine, system, current control set, services, you know, your typical place for services. And then we'll go to the BMC Remedy email engine service under parameters. Now here you can see that JVM option number two and three are the Java min and max heap size. So this is where we can validate that and if we need, we can change it. But you'll notice that we don't see the garbage collection settings here. What we need to do is create a new key and we'll call it JVM option number four, whatever is next on your list. And then we'll set that parameter to the value that's going to show up in the knowledge article. This is list of GC settings. Now I've added another JVM option, so I need to go back and increment the JVM option count. So now it's going to be five. Once I've done that, the next time I start the email engine, it will start using all the different JVM options that are listed in here. To perform the same settings on Unix, I could certainly use VI from a Unix prompt, but I can also do something like use an FTP type of program. I'm using WinSCP here, and I just navigate to the AR email directory, find the email d.sh startup script, and then when I open up the startup script, there's a very obvious line that has the Java ops, and you can see here the standard uh, min and max heap size are already set, and so all I really need to do is paste in again the GC settings that are going to be in the knowledge article. Once I've set those here, I can save the file, and next time I start up the email engine, I'll get my memory settings as well as the GC settings. There was one other setting I needed to set, and that was the mailbox polling units as minutes. To do that, I'll simply open up the administration console and go to the centralized configuration which is right here. When I do that I can pick email engine and I'll find the email engine. Now, I may have to do this if I have multiple servers I'll pick the email engine on on every server in my group. Each email engine needs to be set individually. I'll come down and I'll find the mailbox polling units as minutes. By default it's set to true and I'll just change that to false. Once I've applied that then the next time I restart the email engine, that will take place as well. Now let's look at the tuning recommendations specifically for outgoing messages. You can see there's several settings here that we recommend changing. The first is the send email set size. We tested this with multiple values and found out that 2000 is generally the best when you consider the test that we're performing. The default is 100 and you would set this in the central config. The next setting is the outgoing messages queue size. 
and our recommendation is also 2000 and again the default is 100 and we'll set this in the central config. Next we'll set the number of sender threads to 16. This is the number of threads that each mailbox will use when sending emails. The default is only four and in our test 16 worked a lot better and 16 was actually better than some of the higher numbers as well. The next setting is the polling interval. Now remember we had already set the polling units to seconds so now for each of your mailboxes you just need to set the polling interval to 15 and that will be seconds and this is set for each mailbox in the AR system email mailbox configuration form. The last recommendation that we have for outgoing is to modify an index that's on the AR system email messages form. In some versions, any version that's older than 1808 patch 1 with the hotfix of 429 uh, 2020, anything older than that is probably missing this index. And what we recommend doing is taking this index and adding C1 to the first column of that index. And I'll show you how to do that. And that you can do in Dev Studio. So let me show you how to set all of these. So I'm back in my test environment here, and I'm just going to show you how to set these parameters. So I'm still in the centralized configuration under the email daemon settings, which is where I want to be. The first setting was send email set size, and I'm going to set it to 2000. So I see send email set size right here, and I'm just going to change the value to 2000. I'll go ahead and apply that. The next setting was outgoing messages queue size. Now I don't see outgoing messages queue size here, so I can simply add a setting here, set the value of 2000, and apply it. And now I have that done. The last setting that I'm going to set from the centralized configuration is the number of sender threads. And again, I don't see it on the list, so I'm simply going to add the setting and set it to the recommended 16 and apply it. So again, all of these settings will take place the next time I start email engine. The next setting that I'm uh, wanting to look at is the polling interval. Now this is per mailbox. So what I can do is go into the administration console, open up my mailbox configuration form and search for any outgoing enabled mailboxes. So do a search. I find my one outgoing enabled mailbox now let's just change the polling interval to 15. And again, that's going to mean 15 seconds here. And I'll save that. So the last thing I want to focus on is the index that I mentioned. So I'm going to open up Dev Studio. And here I already have the AR system email messages form open. And I have it open in base development mode. And that's because this change is a change that will occur in a future hotfix if you're on version 1808 or 1805. And so since uh, we've already deemed it a defect and already have it fixed in later releases, you can go ahead and add it in base mode. And to do that, you can just go to your definitions tab, find your indexes. We're looking specifically for the 18093 index. And what we want to do is add C1 as the first column. So let's click on add. We'll find our list of fields. We can sort it so we can easily find C1. Once we add C1, we want to move it to the top. So we'll just click up until it's at the top. Now that C1 is the first column in the index, we're done and we want to save that. So that's all we need to do to fix the index. Now let's look at the recommendations for incoming messages. There's only three of them here. The first one is incoming connection recycle size. And here we found that 1,000 provides the best performance. And the default is 100. And we're going to set this in the centralized configuration again. The next setting is the incoming messages queue size. This also is going to be set at 1,000 from the centralized configuration. And again, just as we did with outgoing messages, we're going to set the polling interval. But here we're going to set it to 30 seconds. We found out that with incoming messages, 30 seconds seems to provide us the best performance. Back on my test box, I'll quickly show you how to set these. So the first one was the incoming connection recycle size, which we want to set to 1,000. Then we want to check the incoming messages queue size and also set it to 1,000. I can do those both in one shot and then click apply to apply both of them. And now the last thing was to change the polling interval. And now I'll do a new search and find all of my enabled uh, incoming mailboxes. 
and here's my one incoming enabled mailbox and I want to make sure that the polling interval is set to 30 and once again the unit of measurement is now seconds. And that's it for our best practice tuning recommendations for the email engine. Now let me quickly recap what the benefits of using these recommendations are. We did an incoming test with 5,000 incoming emails and with the default settings it took over five hours to process those at a rate of 16 per minute. And when we use the best practice settings, those same 5,000 emails took just a little over an hour to process at a rate of 73 per minute. So that's pretty significant. And for outgoing, we tested 500,000 outgoing emails. With the default settings, it took 23 hours to send those at a rate of 360 per minute. With the best practice recommendations, we were able to bring that down to uh, under 11 hours at a rate of 766 per minute. So that's why we recommend these settings is because you should be able to see a significant improvement in your performance. Now let's look at the exciting new email engine test button. BMC already provides an email test utility that comes with the email engine and Mike is actually going to demo that a little bit later. But the email test button is a UI alternative to that. It's accessible through a button directly on the AR system email mailbox configuration form. So uh, you'll see directly from that form, you can click on a button and the utility will fire in the background. The utility is targeted for a future release of the AR system, but it's available now as a download from the BMC communities. I'm back on my test box here and I'm gonna open up a browser and do a search for communities.bmc.com, then email test button. That's an easy way to find the utility. And the, probably the best place to start is this article, Trending and Support. This article, Trending and Support, a new button to test your email engine mailbox configurations will get, will get you started. This is an introductory article that talks about the utility. It has some screenshots and a lot of description. But it also has a link to the knowledge article that has the specific installation instructions as well as the download for the utility. So we'll go ahead and click on the link to the knowledge article. And at the bottom of the link is a download for the utility. So let's go ahead and do that. Once the utility is downloaded, I can just open up the zip file. And inside the zip file is this package that contains a definition file, the main jar file for the utility, and then a batch file for Windows and a shell script for Unix. The installation is very simple and is well documented in the knowledge article. Once it's installed, you can simply go to your admin console and open up the mailbox configuration form and you'll see this new test configuration tab. And this is where all the new functionality resides. You can use the new test button when setting up a new configuration or to test an existing one. You just need to make sure that the necessary configuration parameters are populated in the basic configuration tab and the advanced configuration tab. So let's take an example here. I'm gonna try an outgoing mailbox. So I'm gonna populate the important fields like the post office name, the port, the email server user, the password for that user. And for outgoing, I need to go to the advanced configuration tab and populate an email address, and a reply to address. Once that's all done, I can click on the test configuration tab and simply click on the test configuration button. And in this case, the information that I put in was all correct. And you can see that not only is the success checkbox marked, but also the test result shows me exactly what it did. The parameters that it used says that it successfully connected and sent a simple message. And that is considered a success. You can also easily use this tool to test your existing configurations. Let me do a new search and we'll find all of my enabled mailboxes. And I'll click on the existing outgoing mailbox. I'm already on the test configuration tab and I'll click on test configuration. So this mailbox was set up properly and is successfully connected and was able to send a test email. We can also use this to test incoming email mailboxes. So I'll click on my incoming mailbox 
and then do a test configuration. Again, you can see that the test was successful, but in the test results, you see slightly different output because when you're testing an incoming message, it connects to the post office and then it tries to see if there's any messages ready to read and it will try to read up to five of those. It won't delete them, so it leaves them safely there, but it does attempt to read them and if it's able to read them, then you'll get a little bit more information. But in any case, this was a successful test. Now let's look at some of the options you have on the screen. First, we see the email engine server name. Most customers are going to use the test button by logging into the AIR system using their normal web client, which may use a load balancer to connect to any AIR server in the group. Well, this means that there's a high probability that you'll not be connecting to a specific server that's running the email engine. Since the test button uses files that are included with the email engine, and because it's probably in your best interest to actually test one of the boxes that are running the email engine that you're actually wanting to look at, we provided a field to set the server name to run the test on. You can change this value to any of your email engine servers that you've configured the test button on. Since the email engine, and therefore the test button, use Java Mail to perform its functions, it uses standard Java methods. This means that some features are invoked via Java options. There's four common Java options that have been provided as checkboxes here. You can use the common settings for configuring TLS and for setting debug options. Any combination of these is valid, and when you select one or more of these options, you'll see the Java options field change dynamically. So if I select uh, TLS enabled, you see the option for TLS pop up down here. If I want to enable email debug, it will show up here as well. So any of these options and any combination of these options is valid. You can also edit the Java options field to manually add any custom Java options that you want to run with. When you click the test configuration button, whatever is populated in this field, the Java options field, will get run with the utility. I'll show you a quick example of using the email debug option. I'll just select the one option, click on the test configuration, and when I look at the results, I can see the debug output. Lots of output. So when I'm troubleshooting an issue, these options are really nice. This is a great tool to test a new mailbox that you're setting up, but it's also a great tool to troubleshoot problems if you notice that your email engine isn't able to send emails and you just want to be able to make sure that your mailbox is set up properly. Now let's take an example of something that's not working quite right. Here I have my POP3 mailbox all set up and I'm going to run the test configuration, see what happens. And you can see here that the success checkbox is not checked. And so I'll look at the test results and see what I find. And here it shows that it could not connect to host, test post office LB. So it looks like it's trying to connect to maybe a load balancer uh, to get to the post office, and it wasn't able to connect. <clears throat> and it reports that it could con couldn't connect to the host comma port. So it could either be the host name or the port number that's using. So let's go back to the basic configuration. And now I can check with my post office administrator, make sure I have the host name correct, or maybe I need to use an IP address. But in this case, it turns out that my name is actually just test post office. So I'll fix that and I'll save it and try it again. So I've run the test configuration and this time it's successful. So that kind of showed me that I got a very clear error message telling me that my problem was either the host name or the port number, making it really easy to fix my mailbox. Let's try a slightly more complex example. I'll look at my SMTP mailbox here, and here it's all set up for me already, so I'm just going to test the configuration and see what happens. So I didn't get a success. And if I look at the message, it's very generic. It just simply says it could not connect to the SMTP host. And I just found out from my prior test that the host name is actually test post office. I know that's right. And I think the port number is right at 25. So what else can I do here? Well, I can try using my email debug or my SSL debug, depending on if I um, am using SSL. So let me try the email debug and see what happens. I'm going to run the test configuration again, and here I get a lot more output, and we can look at the output and see if it helps us at all. So there's a lot of just verbiage here that talks about the different Java classes and things that are getting used. So 
But ultimately, the error message is simply, once again, it could not connect to the SMTP host. When I looked at the basic configuration, I did happen to notice that email server requires SSL was set to yes, and it's using port 25. So it seems like there may be a mismatch there. Port 25 is usually the non-SSL port. So let me try the test configuration again. And because it was set to use SSL, I'm going to choose the SSL debug option here. And I'm going to run the configuration again. Now I have the no success again, as expected. And now I have a lot of information from the SSL debug. And so I might just send this to my SSL administrator or my post office administrator and have them check and see if they can figure out what's wrong. But if I look through this, this is a typical SSL type of handshake output that you would expect. If I go to the very bottom of this, there might be something useful down here. And one thing I noticed was this message here, unrecognized SSL message, plain text connection, question mark. And I looked that up on Google, and it basically said that the connection I'm making is likely not to a server that is expecting SSL. So it's like I'm trying to communicate SSL to a server that doesn't want to communicate back with SSL. And so it probably is likely that in my basic configuration that this uh, email server requires SSL is actually wrong. So let me try one more time. I'll set it to no. And now I don't have to save. When I use the test configuration, I can go ahead and make changes without saving it. And the test configuration option is simply going to use whatever is on the screen for the basic and advanced tabs. So I've uh, set this to not use SSL, and I'm going to test it again. And lo and behold, it works. So this might be an example of how the SSL debug option uh, helped me to figure out what was wrong with my mailbox. Well, that's it for my demo. As you can see, it's a really simple tool to use, and it really has a lot of power. It makes it really easy to test your existing configurations with a click of a single button. But there are some limitations. For example, the original email test utility that still ships with the email engine allows you to test any of the supported protocols, and that includes SMTP, POP3, IMAP4, MAPI, MBOX, and Exchange Web Services. Due to the complexities of handling permissions, the email test button doesn't currently support MAPI or MBOX, but it does support all the other protocols. Also, the email test button is used only to test the connectivity to your post office. It doesn't test any of the other aspects of the email engine. So make sure that you're using it for the right situations. One last thing, when using the email test button, you might find that you get a process timeout error. And that's because when you click on the button, a run process action occurs. And if you have your process timeout set too low, such as like five seconds, that may cause a problem. So we do recommend that you set the process timeout to 30 seconds or more, just in case it takes a bit of time to perform the test. And now Mike is going to show you our new email engine troubleshooting guides. Thanks, Doug. Hi, I'm Mike Farenbrook, Senior Technical Support Analyst for BMC Software on the AR System Server Team. I'm going to walk you through some of our new email engine troubleshooting guides. As we highlight and discuss the newly published troubleshooting guides for the Remedy email engine, we would like to bring to your attention the efforts put into all the troubleshooting guides BMC has been working to create and publish in our documentation pages. The purpose and goal of the troubleshooting guides is to help you as an end user understand, identify, and self-solve, and in the event you're not able to self-solve, then you already have all of the items and data needed to open a better support case. Now you may ask why multiple guides for the email engine? Well, the guides have been created based on data analysis for the top areas of the email engine support issues raised by customers over the past several months. Each guide is custom to that specific topic. As highlighted on this ARS 2002 page, you can see the troubleshooting section is located at the top level of the navigation pane, as well as the link highlighted on the bottom right of the screen. Here I've highlighted on the left the troubleshooting remedy email engine page for easy reference. So let's take a look now at the currently available pages for the email engine. On the Troubleshooting Remedy Email Engine top page, you can see the currently available troubleshooting guides, including a common issues link, links to the previous Connect with Remedy webinars, popular KAs, and related topics. We are working to add more guides, so check these pages often. 
So let's take a look now at the three available pages where for incoming and performance pages, I'll walk you through the steps of the guides to help give you an idea of how they flow. And for outgoing, we'll actually do a live demo of walking through the steps. So I'm going to walk you through the steps for incoming, and this will help give you an idea of how the guides flow. For incoming, the first step would be to validate the mailbox configuration using the email engine test utility. The test utility will help you to confirm the configuration parameters you're using to connect to the mail server are valid. Once you've run the utility, you can check the output, take the corrective action to correct any errors that you see. Once that utility runs successfully, now you've resolved your issue and you'll have successfully avoided creating a support case. Once you've validated your mailbox configuration, if you're still having an issue, then you move to step two. Step two involves reviewing additional configurations for the email engine. This could be in the mailbox configuration form, this could be for the email daemon.properties, or even server group related functionality such as the failover or server group operations ranking. After you've reviewed all the other configuration items and taken corrective actions if needed, if you find that the issue persists, you may need to enable additional logs. Then reproduce the issue or wait for it to occur, disable the logs, collect the logs, and analyze them. Each troubleshooting guide has a table of possible common issues with resolutions which you can use based on the findings in your logs. If you do not find a resolution based on what you found in the logs, now have all the data needed to open up a BMC support case. Now let's look at the performance troubleshooting guide, which as you can see has quite a few more steps and is a bit more complex. The first thing we want to do is identify whether the problems with outgoing or incoming emails. Typically we see the most common issues with outgoing emails. And the first thing that you want to do is work to identify if email messages are queuing up in the Air System email messages form. If you do not notice any queuing in the Air System email messages form, then you're going to need to work to check the application workflow. Once you validated the application workflow, if the issue is not resolved then, you will need to check the configuration of the email engine. After checking the configuration, the next step would be to review the currently enabled logs for any existing errors and take corrective action on those. If you're not able to do that or find any errors, you'll need to enable additional logging for both the email engine and possibly the AR system server. Then reproduce the issue or wait for the next occurrence. You'll want to collect and analyze the logs and use a couple of our tools such as the Drupal utility for the email engine log and AR log analyzer for the AR server. Once you've analyzed the logs, you can use the common issues table to look for known issues and take corrective action. If you do not find a common issue on that page that helps to resolve your issue, you can run the log zipper, zip up the logs, and now you have everything once again that you need to create a BMC support case. Now that we've previewed the troubleshooting guides for incoming and performance, let's take a look at the outgoing guide. For outgoing, we've listed the basic steps on the screen, but let's actually walk through the guide together in a live demo. The first step we suggest, since it is the most common problem, is to validate the mail server connection parameters in the mailbox configuration form for the outgoing mailbox using the test email utility. Here we have the outgoing SMTB mailbox we're going to be using for this demonstration. Now the basic configuration tab contains the fields and data we'll use with the test email utility, so it's a good idea to keep this form open and visible while running the utility. I've opened an explorer window to my AR email install directory, and here you can see the test email that exists. This is because starting with 1805, the test email utility installs with the AR system server. If you are on a previous version, you can locate and download the utility or the test button Doug demonstrated earlier from the BMC communities page referenced at the end of today's presentation. The test button makes it easy and convenient to test right from the form, but it doesn't yet support Mappy or Mbox like the utility does. So for this demo, we'll be using the command line utility. Now I've opened a command line to the AR email directory as well, and we're going to go ahead and run the utility now, again keeping in mind that we're going to be pulling information from the mailbox configuration form. 
So I'm going to run the test email utility. And this is prompt driven, so for outgoing, I'm going to select option one for SMTP option zero. For the server name and IP address, I can pull that from the form here. The server port also listed on the form, which is the default today, 25. Email server user, I can pull as well. And now I think the password is AR system. So we're going to try that. I'm not going to be using SSL today, so I'm going to select option zero. The from email address, if you've configured it, you can get it from the advanced tab. The to email address does need to be a valid email address because we're going to actually send a simple email. So I'm going to say arsmail at rst.bmc.com. And as you can see, the utility replays the information that I'm testing with. And in this case, we have an error on authentication. So let's try it again with a different password because, well, obviously my password is wrong. And I know that. So we'll do test email again. Again, one for outgoing, zero for SMTP. Pulling the mail server name from the form. Port 25, email server user again from the form. Password I think is remedy. We'll soon find out. No SSL from email address. We'll get it from the form again. And RST, oops, excuse me, ARS mail at rst.pmc.com. And this time you can see that we have, in fact, sent a very simple message. This does send an actual message to the recipient. So that's why I mentioned you have to have a valid email address here. Once we've identified and corrected any possible connectivity issues using the utility, if the outgoing issue persists, we'll need to work to validate some additional configuration in the mailbox configuration form, email daemon.properties, and server group operation and failover forms. For the mailbox configuration form, the first thing we want to make sure is that the mailbox you're working with is enabled. This sounds very simple, but it does come up, so that's why we make mention of it. Next, we want to check the polling interval. Here we see we have 15, but at this point, we may not be sure if that's going to be minutes or seconds, and we'll check that in just a minute. On the Advanced Configuration tab, we want to check to make sure that you have the default outgoing mailbox selected and the option set to Yes. Now, there can only be one default outgoing mailbox, and there should always be one outgoing default mailbox because we have our out-of-the-box workflow that ensures that at least one mailbox, if you have multiple, is set to the default. Next, we want to start checking some server group operation ranking forms and failover forms. First form that we're going to check is the server group operation ranking form. We're going to use it to verify the service failover. Take a quick search, and I can see that I have two servers, both ranked Remedy Prod 1 ranked 1, Remedy Prod 2 ranked 2. The next form to check is the AR System Service Failover Ranking form, and we want to validate the rankings on the mailboxes. Here you can see I have four mailboxes listed, two for Remedy Prod 1, two for Remedy Prod 2, but on Remedy Prod 2, my ranks are 1 for SMTP and 1 for POP3. On Remedy Prod 1, I have them just the opposite, both ranked uh, number 2. Now, this is important, especially for the next form, which is the service failover whiteboard form. So whatever I have ranked 1 here in the AR system failover ranking form, which in this case is my Remedy Prod 2 server for both SMTP and POP3, I should see as active on this form. If they're not active, then there could be some configuration issues we need to dig deeper into. But at this point here, you can see that they are. The next field we want to check is the last heartbeat field. Refresh the form frequently to make sure that the value of the last heartbeat field is getting updated as expected 
which is actually every 30 seconds. Here you can see it just updated and I click refresh. Now finally one other form that you might want to look at is the AR System Server Group Current Ranking form and this shows the currently owned operations by each server. So here we can see that my service failover is owned by Remedy Prod 1. Once you validated the server group operation failover and rankings, the next step would be to review the email daemon using the centralized configuration settings, also known as the configuration UI. There's also another way to get to this form, and that's also from the AR System Administration Console. Under System, Email, you can go to Email Server Configuration. Now the difference in this form is it's the same configuration UI, but it just has the contents for the email daemon. And again, we're going to select the Prod2 server because that's the one I'm working with today. So the first thing we want to check here is the polling unit measurement. That's this value listed here. Mailbox polling unit is minutes. The values are true or false. If it's true, that means the polling interval is going to be in minutes. If it's false, that means it's going to be in seconds. So back here on my AR system email mailbox configuration form, remember on the basic configuration tab, we have 15. In my configuration UI, I have this value set to false, which means it's going to be seconds. So now I can confirm that this value here is going to be in seconds. A few other parameters you want to check are the number of sender threads, the outgoing message queue size, and the send email set size. Note that there are defaults for these, and if you don't see the setting name listed, the system will use the defaults. To increase or modify the values, you can add the parameters as needed again on a per server basis from this form. I just want to reiterate too that the actual troubleshooting guides contain references and resources to help you dig in further to each one of these steps so please reference the guides as needed. After validating all the configuration and some of the performance parameters, if the problem persists we'll likely need to enable the finest logging for the email engine. Here you can see I already have it set on my email daemon dot level. If this is set to any other value, you just want to edit it here and click Apply. Once you've enabled finest logging, the next step would be to either reproduce the problem or wait for the next occurrence. Once it has reproduced, you want to disable the logs and then collect them and move them to a location to ensure they'll not be overwritten or deleted so you can work to analyze them. The AR email logs are located in the AR email install directory under the logs folder. You may notice an email log.back and the current email.log. You'll want to grab both of these logs and move them off to a location to ensure that they're not overwritten or deleted while you're trying to analyze the logs. As you analyze the logs, make use of the common issues table on the guide to help identify and correct possible problem. In the event you're not able to resolve the issue at this point, you'll want to collect the logs screenshots of the basic and advanced tabs of the mailbox configuration form for the outgoing mailbox along with the detailed information of the problem and then provide these items when you open the case with BMC support. Zip the logs and the screenshots and attach them to your case. You can attach up to a 2 gigabyte file via the support web. If the zip files are larger than 2 gigs then you can upload them to the MFT site. You'll find a link with instructions for that process on the Troubleshooting Guides page. And that's the basics of troubleshooting an outgoing email issue using the Troubleshooting Guide for outgoing email messages. Again, the purpose of the guides are to help you understand, identify, self-solve, and in the event you're not able to self-solve, then you'll already have the items and data needed to open a better support case. This concludes our discussion and demonstrations for the Email Engine Performance Best Practices, Test Button, and Troubleshooting Guides. The links to the documentation and other references included in this webinar today have been gathered together on this page to help make it easier to find them. In summary, we're glad to announce and share the Email Engine Performance Best Practice settings and configuration. We have two great new utilities, the Test Button for confirming mailbox configuration, and the Throughput Analyzer for evaluating outgoing email performance. Finally, the Email Engine Troubleshooting Guides with the three guides for incoming, outgoing, and performance are now published and ready for use. As mentioned earlier, be sure to check the Troubleshooting Guide pages often as we'll be publishing additional pages soon. 
And that concludes our presentation. Back to you, Greg. Thank you, Mike. And now I'll take us through the self-help and contacting BMC. The YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted is listed here. It has previous webinars that we've delivered, as well as a rich set of how-to videos that can help you with your self-solve. The webinar schedule is available at this community's link. It has all of our future webinars, as well as past webinars and recordings that we've had. And the hot off the press newsletter has a rich set of trending information that you can find at this link. And as always, contacting technical support via web, phone, email, or these social channels is available. This webinar and any Q&A will be posted a week from today's presentation. Thank you, and that will conclude our webinar.